Hello and welcome to One North Maine, Brockton's magazine show where we profile people, places, and events that make this city, our city, great. I'm your host, Jay Miller, and we're at the Brockton Public Library today. They have a great Martin Luther King display. The reason I mention that, it's our annual Martin Luther King Special Edition. We have four events that we covered during the course of two weeks here in Brockton and outside of Brockton. Those events included the Temple Beth Amuna Messiah Baptist Church MLK celebration, the Adult Day Learning Center over on the north side of town held a unique Martin Luther King Day celebration. The Cape Vernian Association sponsored their annual MLK event on Martin Luther King Day. And of course, the annual NAACP MLK Memorial Day Breakfast. We hope you enjoy the show, so sit back, relax, and see what your community, the City of Champions, has to offer. <laughs> St. Edith Stein was the site for a special event celebrating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. The Cape Verdean Association sponsored the event. We had a host of politicians and kids reading excerpts of King's memorable speeches. It was the only event to celebrate the Reverend Doctor on the holiday. Quite a show, quite a sight. Let's check it out. I have a dream that I can become anything and everything I want to be. I have a dream that I could become a better person. I have a dream that my family stays healthy. I have a dream that my family would be happy for me. And it's great honor to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday today. A lot of his initiatives, he gave his death for our country like Jesus died so we would have faith and be able to go to heaven, Martin Luther King gave his life for what he believed in. And there is no greater gift to give your own life for what you believe in. So we are here for you. We are honored to be here. I'm forever grateful to be your state senator. And if you ever need anything or any ideas that you think we should be doing at the state level or the local level, we work for the residents of our community. So don't be afraid. Any ideas, please contact us because we work for all of you. And we're grateful. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, obrigado. Thank you. Well, I just want to thank Moises very much for hosting this uh, on Martin Luther King's Day. And uh, we should all recognize that Martin Luther King was uh, uh, a man that would uh, bring people together. That's what the, the Brockton is, a melting pot of different communities. And we should all come together to uh, make Brockton a better place. I was over yesterday at the uh, Temple Beth Amuna Martin Luther King celebration and Gene Derencourt uh, just did a phenomenal job, phenomenal job of what, uh, what this country is all about. I have a dream that my friends are achieved all things that come their way. Oh, I have a dream that I can teach kids. Oh, I have a dream that this world will be a better place. Where racism seems to be um, being elevated to a point that um, seems like we're, I'm living in the 50s or something. What I would think the world would be like before Martin Luther King showed us the right way and so many civil rights activists. And what I want to challenge each and every one of you to do and what I challenge myself to do every day is to not be silent, to stand up, to be like MLK, to be like so many civil rights activists, to be like your parents and your grandparents who fought so hard for these rights that we have and that you have. I have a dream that all children will grow up and be what they want to be. I have a dream that all children will live their dreams and have a happy family. Um, I, I came here today, I have three young children. I came here today um, because we need to look at what Dr. King was saying in 1963 when he said, I have a dream. It meant a lot. 
and it means a lot today. It means a lot for our generation. And when we look, and I can say this on the city council, there's 11 of us. I can say right now that we find it despicable and racist tone what Donald Trump has said to our friends from Haiti, our brothers and sisters, and those that come from the African nations. But at the end of the day, he's just one man. This is what it's about. It's the citizens that live in the city, the Commonwealth, and the country. We can work together, just like Dr. King said, work together with grace, dignity, and the struggle. When you look at Julian Bond or John Lewis, people that worked hard for civil rights, they did it to better, not just the present, but the future. Dr. King wished, Dr. King prayed that one day all people would live unafraid. Dr. King cared for blacks and whites. He wanted for all people to share equal rights. Dr. King dreamed, treat people kindly, do what is fair, work for all people, show that you care. These are the ways if we work as a team to remember the man who said, I have a dream. And because I think it's just that important for us to, uh, to come here and celebrate a man who, uh, he didn't have to give, he didn't have to do all the stuff that he did. You know, he could just sit back, you know, done his preaching, uh, taking care of his congregation quietly, uh, and do what 99.99999% of us do. You know, go along to get along. I'm actually a little upset at the, not the Republican Party, but the Democrats in Washington who don't call this man for what he is. He basically is representing 35 to 45% of Americans. And somehow, they, the Democrats, are allowing him to talk about how what he's doing is doing it for the American people. His dream moves on. Today is a day we all sing in honor of Martin Luther King. Wherever people fight to be free, his name is remembered with dignity. When black people weren't treated right, he stood strong to lead the fight. He fought with love, no guns or, or darts. He changed people's minds and their hearts. But sometimes people do not like his words. He wasn't, he was taken away to a better world. Yet his dream was on that all can be free when we knock down the walls between you and me. Martin Luther King's life did not last, but his dream and spirit are free at last. Just one more time. We need to go back to the source. Say it now. We need to go back to the source. I need somebody to look to somebody on the left side and say these words. You may not look like me. Y'all like ain't talking back. You may not look like me. You may not look like me. But the bishop says, the bishop says we, family. we family. Are you a friend or foe of the American rainbow? Diversity is our strength. Or are you willing to accept the hurricane of bigotry, sexism, and a return to 19th century racism? For those of you who don't know what 19th century racism is, I'm gonna give you an example as a black man. That means that if I'm having a conversation with a white person and something I say is inappropriate, I get hung from a tree. Do y'all wanna go back to that? No. Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Lopes. Secretary of the Board of the Cape Verdean Association. Um, just on behalf of the board, on behalf of our President Joe Miranda, I wanted to just take a moment to thank all of you for coming out. Obrigado por estudo que vem hoje. I think most importantly, we've heard a lot today about what the organization does, um, Moses's idea behind this event, and we've talked a lot about Martin Luther King's vision, his dream. But I think most importantly, what Martin Luther King talks about is service. Right? So when we talk about the people that are here, the elected officials, members of the church, that we all leave here with that message of service. When we talk about the youth like Bishop did, what are we doing every single day to serve and to be better leaders in our community? And I am just grateful to be a part of this wonderful organization that every single day is looking to serve um, an immigrant community, an expanding community, a diverse community. So. On behalf of this organization, um, we continue to serve you and we're here for you in all the efforts that you do. Thank you again to our staff who helped put this wonderful event together. Can we get a round of applause for Angela and the rest of the group? 
again, Moses, thank you, our executive director, who um, always continues to outservice all. And our elected officials, may you continue to move forward in that mission of service. And God may bless all of you and walk forward with you. And thank you all. For many years, Messiah Baptist Church and Temple Beth Amuna have partnered up to celebrate the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This year was no different. The venue was, though. They were at the Temple, which is now located in Easton, coordinated by Steve Weiner of the Temple and Sharon Molden of Messiah Baptist Church. The energy was there, the excitement was there, and the people were there to celebrate. We had a great time. We hope you do, too. Check it out. Welcome. This is new space to us. As you can tell, there's not a lot of decoration on the wall. My first decoration, and would ask uh, the member of the press uh, enterprise, I believe it is, um, if he could take a picture of us. <laughs> and we'll use that picture as the first picture to put up. <laughs> okay. As human beings created in the image of God, we all have the right to be treated equally and be accorded the same privileges and rights as anyone else. We need to stand up to the bullies, the oppressors, the privileged few who are desperately trying to hold on to their advantage status and tell them no more. Time has come for gender equality, for race equality, for economic equality, for equal opportunity, for full equality. I was never so proud as when the Boston Common Meeting for the call for what I call Make America Great Again was halted by good people in the streets marching against the protest. A certain candidate in Alabama believed that going back to slavery and Jim Crow was when America was great. I call the election in Alabama the first step in making America, America again. Dr. King once said, in August of 2017 in Charlottesville, 32-year-old paralegal named Heather Heyer was killed when a driver filled with hate drove his car into the marches. Heather Hyatt dedicated her life to standing up for those she felt were not being heard, her family and friends said. She died fighting for her beliefs and campaigning against hate. She died, like many before her, during the Civil Rights Movement. She was out there the same way a 32-year-old Martin Luther King was out there. Hell, she was out there the same way and now Martin Luther King pushing 90 would still be out there. This year we are dedicating our program to Heather and all the people who gave their lives in the movement. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. I would like to quote the Bible. Um, in Matthew 7, verse 7, the Bible said, Ask, uh, it shall be given to you. And seek, you shall find, and knock, the door shall be open. I think this moment, more than ever, we are asking for justice. We are asking for justice because in the face of what we already know, the Trump administration, have shown no respect for any of us. I don't care whether you are Republican or Democrat, but so far, and you know it, no respect for us. And I am very hurt by the President's recent statement as a Haitian American man and the first Haitian American male elected in Massachusetts, the President just killed me. When he called Haiti, I will not repeat the word that you already know. It's a shameful. As the first black nation independent in this world, I would assume the president would have known what it means to actually have a history like that. We define democracy, not just in our country, but even in this country. If you recall in, in 1779, we fought for this country. In 1943, Haiti gave this country one million dollars during World War II. Most people don't know that history, but I do. You know why? Because I opened the history book we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. I'm a woman who speaks in a voice 
And I tell you I must be heard. At times I can be quite difficult. I'll bow to no man's word. Struggling myself don't mean a whole lot. I've come to realize that teaching others to stand up and fight is the only way my struggle survives. But I do want to express my deep personal appreciation to each of you for extending the invitation. It is always a very rich and a rewarding experience when I can take time, take a brief break from the day-to-day -day demands of our struggle for freedom and human dignity, and discuss the issues involved in that struggle with concerned friends of goodwill all over our nation. And so I deem this a real and a great opportunity. Another thing that I would like to mention is that I have heard we shall overcome. Probably more than I have heard any other song over the last few years, it is something of the theme song of our struggle. But tonight was the first time that I ever heard We Shall Overcome in Hebrew. <laughs> so that too was a beautiful experience for me. So um, please, please join us in singing this. He said, my feet are praying, my feet are praying, marching arm in arm through Selma with Martin Luther King. Abraham Joshua Heschel was his name, my feet are praying. He knew that segregation was the nation's shame, my feet. The agitation that I feel is that they weren't the only folks that understood that bowing down to this idol was against their beliefs and their teachings. They weren't the only ones that had been taught. But the story says that they were the only ones that stood. The story goes on. The King Nebuchadnezzar had made a decree that if folks didn't, weren't bowing down, that there was going to be a consequence for that, that they were going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. One of the hottest places in Brockton right now is the Adult Day Health Center on the north side of town. More than 200 mature adults visit daily and engage in healthy activities that enrich their lives. It's all, it was also the site of a cool Martin Luther King Day celebration. And the person that stole the show was none other than city councilor Gene Bradley Duranancourt. He moved the crowd and got them really fired up. It was quite an event. Let's take a look. They My name is Natasha Clerget, and uh, not too long ago, I got elected in uh, the town of Randolph as the first Haitian, I'm not going to even say Haitian women, as the first Haitian to be elected in office in a town where half of the population is Haitian. 
Dr. Martin Luther, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Martin Luther King has a, had a dream. I'm, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> he had a dream that one day the great people of Brockton would vote the first Haitian American to office. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as I, I, my name is John Buckley. I am the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. We're responsible in our office for all the land records from here in Brockton to Plymouth all the way uh, down to almost New Bedford. And our staff uh, very much treats people respectfully and makes sure that anyone that comes into our offices have our questions answered. Because for most people, their home is their most valuable asset. I was very proud to support Gene in this election. I think that uh, we all have to work together in these very, very difficult times. South Shore Haitian Adopted Health, honoring Jean Bradley de Rancourt, in recognition for your achievement as the first Haitian American counselor in the city of Brockton, Massachusetts, January 15, 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I came in this country in 2010. Yes, I became a U.S. citizen. But I'm proud to tell you now that I am an American, like everybody else. Because this is our city. This is our country. So on a date like that, I don't think we should have talked about what Trump said. We should honor the greatness of Dr. King, his legacy, and what we as young people can do with his word and his determination to see that black and white, yellow or green, come together as one to talk about what we can do as people, regardless where we come from. I am not scared of anything. You know why? Because I was born in Haiti. Come on. The NAACP is a great organization, and Brockton's chapter is tremendous, led by President Phyllis Ellis. They're making things happen and they're doing it with a loud voice and a strong voice. They held their annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King breakfast this year at Lombardo's, which is a beautiful venue. This event was power packed and the energy was palpable. We enjoyed it and we hope you enjoy some clips from this fantastic celebration. Dancing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening sky. He had a dream that one day this nation would rise up and realize the true meaning of his creed, that all people are created equal. Well, in 2018, I have a dream. I have a dream. I close my eyes and I dream that one day, one day, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People will not have to eliminate race-based discrimination. I have a dream that one day, one day, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People will not have to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of all people. Okay, I'm, I'll make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, the president. <laughs> well, thank you, Tony. <laughs> I appreciate that. Shana. Yes. Tony has given you uh, just do. <laughs> but I would like to say that when I told Shana she would be awarded, I asked her to send me in a picture and a bio, <laughs> right? So she sends me in this huge bio, and I'm like, Shana, there's no way I can get this in our program book. So what I want to do is so impressive that I had it blown up in a poster so she can have that. Isn't that great? In addition, we have this Outstanding Achievement Award also to give to you from the Brockton Area Branch in ACP. Congratulations. Thank you. And we have a bouquet of flowers. I love flowers. This is how we roll. <laughs> 
so this is actually a, a real pleasant distraction from kind of what's been going on and waking up to hear that uh, you may not have a job soon or you may not get paid so um, it's really I'm really really happy to be here uh, with all of you and your, your shining smiling faces back at me um, you know it, it's I've you know, I, I guess it reflects in my bio. I've, I've received a lot of awards from a lot of different places, organizations, and um, I'm always grateful, always grateful to be recognized. But, you know, it truly is something special to be recognized by your own people. Um, and, and like Tony said, when you're trying to bring the issues of the African American community, the, the communities of color, forward uh, to, the, to the conversation, sometimes it's hard, sometimes there's pushback. But you have to do it. Those are things that you must do. Get with us steady. Tears have been watered. And since we love you, we're giving you this heart award because you do so many things out of the goodness of your heart. Here we go. You. And we have flowers. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm not a speech person, and I'm just so grateful to all of you for being here, and I appreciate the NAACP. I've been a part of it for a long time, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. And I love the NAACP, I love my community, I love my family, they're here today. Thank you very much. As I was driving over this morning, it struck me that Historically, this breakfast is usually last Saturday, not this Saturday. And, but then I thought to myself, could there not have been a better time to take a few moments to think about the life and the lessons of Dr. King on a day when our federal government is shut down, on a day when women across the country are marching for their rights, and at a time when we have a president who's willing to give 48 billion dollars in tax breaks to corporations but won't pay for children's health insurance or addiction treatment it's time uh, uh, contribute some time if you've got time to contribute a couple of hours a week and make a donation we need you this is not just a fight for the NACP. It's a fight for all of us. Thank you again. We appreciate you being here. I'm black and I'm proud. Y'all not talking back. I'm black and I'm proud. Kid, say it again. I'm black and I'm what? Give him a hand clap. Hi, my name is Nessie DeBusen and I'm from Brockton. I'm a freshman at UMass Amherst and I'm majoring in biochemistry and molecular biology. So last year I did a project in engineering and I never thought I'd be able to do it. So my project was combating global warming through a new air conditioner design. So I re recreated the air conditioner in a way that it would be safer for our environment and so that the future wouldn't have to suffer for the mistakes that we make. Amen. And we make a lot of them, God knows. But as long as we can fix them now or like lead a pathway to it, I think that we can make a world the better place. The bishop said if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. If you're sitting here right now and you're not frustrated, then you don't know how bad it is. You haven't been paying attention. I want to start that and also say where is the Dr. King in you? Another One North Maine in the books. Apropos, since we're at the library, I'm telling you, you have to check out the Maine Library. It is fantastic. On the floor we're on, they have a makerspace designed for creativity. So please check it out. We hope you enjoyed the show. We really enjoyed covering these events. Every year, it's special, and this year was no different. To learn more about Brockton Community Access, please visit our website at bcatv.org. You can also check out our YouTube page. Here it comes, youtube.com backslash 
the Brockton Channel is all one word. For executive producer Mark Lindy and producer Aaron Tebow, I'm Jay Miller, and we'll see you around town.